This is Y News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. With the help of the Intelligence Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and of the National Intelligen Intelligence Coordinating Agency, Quezon City Police District operatives arrested another alleged financier of the Maute terror group in Nova Liches, Quezon City. Here's why from Lea Ilagan. Through an arrest warrant issued by QCRTC Branch 89, operatives of the Quezon City Police District or QCPD NAV, 42 years old Rasdi Malawani, alias Rasdi Makabangkit or Makabanket, authorities made arrest at his home in Block 4, Lot 2, Maytown Circle, Greenfields 1, Barangay Kaligayahan, Valiches, Quezon City. According to QCPD Director, Police Chief Superintendent Guillermo Eliazar, Rasdi was arrested for violating the Republic Act 10591 or Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulations Act. Authorities placed Rasdi under surveillance and discovered that he is the one operating the Salam Bazaar of Uminta Rumato Maute alias Sarhana, the mother of the Maute brothers. Ito kasi nga suspect natin, this is the uh, brother-in-law of Madi Maute. The one of the sons of Parhana. So uh, after the arrest of uh, Parhana, siya na ngayon ang uh, nag-take over, nag-facilitate ng collection nito. Eliasar says the suspect collected money from stall owners and sent it to a certain Asesya Makabangkit Maute Elias Lili. Makabangkit is allegedly the wife of Madi Maute, the one who planned the Marawi siege. Authorities confiscated from the suspect a 45 caliber pistol with expired license, five ammunitions, a rocket-propelled grenade, and several bank transaction receipts of money transferred to Marawi City. Based on the SISTA documents or uh, receipt, umaabot ng 270,000 or 300,000 ng uh, monthly remittance na pinapadala niya. Sa noong una, undetermined na pinapadalaan, Pero iba kay Lili, even after, ito yung nga, yung after the, that Parahana was, uh, was arrested. National Capital Region Police or NCRPO Chief Director Oscar Albayalde says the public has nothing to worry about as all government intelligence agencies are strictly monitoring the movement of the possible supporters and sympathizers of the beleaguered multi-terror group. Ito yung tinitignan natin, particularly here in Metro Manila. Kasi dito, they can do business, no? legitimate business. Meron dyan because of the death of the leaders, merong mga, yung mga radical, na merong radical na mind, no? yung mga extremists na sinasabi, these are not groups, these are individuals actually. The police will also assess the identities of the salesmen and ladies of the Salam Bazaar in Valichas Plaza Mall to determine if they are in the list of the martial law arrest order. That will be part of our investigation. We will be conducting profiling on all the uh, uh, stall owners doon sa mall na yun. The PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group arrested several weeks ago a certain Amin Kisa Makadato in Valenzuela, another alleged financier of the multi terror group. Official of the PNP believes it is important to arrest the financiers of the pro-ISIS group to prevent it from strengthening its forces in case its member plan a new to sow violence in the country. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Karingal, Quezon City. The Armed Forces of the Philippines says they can now focus on the full rehabilitation of Marawi City after Task Force Marawi has been dissolved. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Mission accomplished. This is the reason why the Joint Task Force Marawi, composed of groups of government troops responsible for liberating Marawi City from ISIS-inspired Maute Group, has been dissolved. Now, the new task force Ranao has been formed to start the full-blown rehabilitation and reconstruction of the city. Pumapasok na tayo ngayon sa isang full-blown na rehabilitation, reconstruction at rebuilding ng Marawi and our... Uh, long road to normalcy of the city. Joint task group Ranao 
uh, is now elevated to a joint task force. 1st Infantry Division Chief Brigadier General Rosalier Morillo is the head of the Joint Task Force Ranao. This is composed of three big engineering battalions of the Philippine Army, Air Force and Navy. For now, the military is still doing its clearing operations in the main battle area to ensure no bomb is left before conducting the post-conflict assessment. The military is still doing its clearing operations in the main battle area to ensure no bomb is left before conducting the post-conflict assessment. Meanwhile, the return of the internally displaced persons in nine barangays will start on Sunday. Some countries have already donated for the reconstruction of Marawi City, while others have given their pledges. However, the pledges still have to be studied upon by concerned government agencies. Uh, we're studying this within the, uh, within the framework of the task force and under the finance and resource mobilization because that's an agreement among the agencies of the task force that any pledge or any aid that we are to receive or may mga offers ng donations, idadaan lahat yan sa task force. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The government targets to finish the construction of temporary shelters in Barangay Tagunsungan in Lanao del Sur before the year ends. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Task Force Bangun Marawi Deputy Chairman Felix Castro says they are targeting the transfer of 600 Marawi families into transition homes in Barangay Sagunsungan, Marawi City, preferably by the end of the year. Ang target namin, 500 to 600. At the same time, ngayon, may nagdidrill na doon ng tubig. Tapos yung kuryente, uh, nagpunta na doon ng Lasoreco, uh, may tining may mga actually may main line uh, pagka nagawa na yon iya ano na to sa mga houses priority na transfer of families whose houses are in the main battle areas totally damaged or burned down by the clash may criteria and uh, kasi ang, ang primary agency responsible is of course the Marawi LDU kasi sila yung talagang nakakakilala nung uh, mga pamilya and may, may criteria lang na sinet and kung mag-fit ka doon, uh, pasok ka. Of course, sa dami nung gustong lumipat, uh, hindi kaya talaga sabay-sabay. Overall, there are 1,100 families that need to be transferred to the said transition homes. The evacuees were glad that the government has provided them temporary shelters, though they have concerns which they appeal for government action. Gusto ko nang makahingi ng yung puna namin, ipaapo na namin sa Marawi. Anisa Mambuay wants to repair her house in case they will not be awarded with a temporary housing unit. Kung nasira man ang bahay namin, tulungan niya kami na makatayo ng bahay, tapos bigyan kami ng ano, kabuhayan namin. Kung okay lang, sana makabalik ako ng trabaho. Meanwhile, according to ASEC Castro, they already have identified a site for the permanent housing project for those whose houses are totally damaged and those who wish not to return to Marawi City. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The driver of the trailer truck that collided with six vehicles at the Batasan San Mateo Road is now facing multiple charges. Here's why from Grace Kasi. The trailer truck involved in a fatal accident in Quezon City yesterday was old and overloaded. This has been the result of the initial investigation of Quezon City Station 6 on the 22-wheeled truck that collided with six vehicles yesterday and left five people dead and 14 others injured. Supposedly, ang capacity ng truck ay nasa 20 tons lang but nung ima-examine ng mga engineer na nag-responde, nasa 60 na tonelada yung karga ng truck. The driver of the trailer truck is now facing multiple charges. Reckless uh, imprudence resulting to multiple uh, homicide and uh, multiple uh, damage to property and uh, physical injuries. The driver Nilo Kalimutan was tearful while apologizing to the families of those who have died and were injured because of the accident. I hope I can dispense with it. I hope I can call them. The relatives of the victims are grieving because of the death of their loved ones. One of them is Randy. His mother, Nida Hercilia, was one of the fatalities. Masakit po. Hindi ko man lang ano siya na kausap po ba. 
Mirasol Can Sancho is the wife of the motorcycle rider who got crushed by the metals that fell from the truck. Pinuntahan ko na doon sa ano, sa pinangyarihan. Ayun po, nakita ko nga yung motor niya doon. May pinakita sa akin picture. Yun daw yung mga patay na dinala doon. Yun nga, na-confirm ko siya yun. Leo Jovito meanwhile refuses to look at the remains of his 16-year-old daughter, one of those on board the red car that got crushed. Hindi ko nakita dahil ayaw ko tingnan. Sama ang ano. Uh, sabi ng ano, ng manugang ko, manugang ko ano. Wasak yung mukha. Resty was pierced by a steel and sustained a huge contusion in his face. He has this to say after surviving the accident. Pasalamat pa rin tayo sa Diyos mo. Binigyan tayo paglamang buhay. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Some groups are worried that the intention of the tax-free balikbayan boxes may not be benefited in full by overseas Filipino workers. Here's why from Nel Maribohok. The Bureau of Customs is yet to revise the implementing rules and guidelines on balikbayan boxes which the agency claims as contrary to existing laws. Thus, Senator Sani Angara has called on the agency to fast-track the release of proper guidelines for the implementation of tax-free balikbayan boxes. According to the senator, who is one of the author of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act or CMTA, there's no assurance if this privilege will be used by overseas Filipino workers. It was last year when Angara called on the attention of the Bureau to implement the guidelines in accordance to the new law. This is the same concern of the Act's OFW party list. Hindi siya na ayon dun sa batas. Ang sabi kasi ng batas sa CMTA Act na 150 and time is 3, 3 times a year. So it's total of 450,000. So yun pa lang, mali na yung implementing rules and guidelines nila. Based in one of the provisions of CMTA, OFWs are exempted from taxes and duties on their balikbayan boxes if such will not exceed 150,000 pesos worth of goods. The privilege may be used three times in a year. If computed, a total of 450,000 pesos worth of goods per year is entitled to tax exemption for OFWs. But in the memorandum order of the BOC signed last July 2017, it appears that an OFW can only use the privilege once, which means only 150,000 pesos tax-free balikbayan box may be sent. Acts OFW Representative Aniceto Bertist calls on for an investigation on the said BOC guideline due to the lack of consultation from the OFW sector hindi sila tumawag ng meeting dyan or hindi sila, walang nag-participate na representative from the migrants. Recently, BOC Commissioner Isidro La Peña suspended the two customs orders providing guidelines on tax-free balikbayan boxes, particularly regarding the too many requirements to avail the tax incentives. BOC also is in continuous consultation with stakeholders to amend some guidelines regarding balikbayan boxes. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Several teachers held another protest in front of the Department of Education's central office to call for the withdrawal of the automatic deduction of their loans from their salaries. Aiko Miguel tells us why. These teachers were very angry while expressing their appeal in front of the Department of Education or DepEd's central office earlier. They also held a dramatization of what they describe as disrespect to their dignities and the needs of their families due to the injustice the government does to them when it decided to deduct their loans from their net take-home pay. One of them is Josephine Labrador, a teacher for 27 years now and a level 3 teacher in the public school of Andres Bonifacio in Tayuman, Manila. Because of the said policy, her take-home pay for the month of October alone is just 800 pesos. Nagulat ako na meron pala na ngayon lang namin nalaman, ano kami mabubuhay? Kaya nakapagtataka, bakit yan ito? Palagay nyo, makapagkakain kami sa 800 na yan, sa walang nakuha? Na lang yun, na pinakagarantya na kami makakapasok ng regular. While Richard Raet have no take-home pay this month, Raet has been working as a public school teacher for 22 years now. 
Zero balance ang lumabas sa ATM. Wala, walang, walang notice sa binigay. Kulat kami lahat. Yesterday, DepEd withdrew its first order to deduct teachers' loans from their take-home pay. But according to Benjamin Valbuena of the Alliance of Concerned Teachers or Act, the government should also raise the salaries of educators in the country. Hindi talaga makatao. At uh, napaka yung ginawa niya nakakapanlait sa bahagi ng mga teachers. Pero hindi pa lubos yung aming kasiyahan kasi ang original na demand namin talaga, ang bottom line dito, itaas yung sahod para hindi nangungutang yung ating mga teachers. DepEd assures that teachers' loans will no longer be deducted from their take-home salaries in accordance with the Department Order No. 55 it released yesterday. Nakatumbas na hindi po makukompromiso yung ating 4,000 net take-home pay rule. Uh, hanggang doon lamang po yung limitasyon ng pagbawas. Under Secretary Umali notes, the recent deductions that happened to the teachers' take-home pay was in accordance with the Section 47 of the General Provisions of Republic Act 10924, where all contributions or obligations in the premiums and loans with the GSIS and HDMF should be deducted to the salaries of government employees. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority will focus on managing the flow of traffic around cemeteries and bus terminals along EDSA in line with next week's UNDAS. Here's why from Abby Santa Ines. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MNDA is ready for expected influx of people in cemeteries and passengers going on vacation to their home provinces. Beginning on Monday, October 30, the MMDA will position more than 2,000 personnel in several major cemeteries in Metro Manila and bus terminals in Cubao and Pasay City. MMDA personnel will primarily focus on managing traffic situation in areas near the Manila North Cemetery, Manila South Cemetery, San Juan Public Cemetery, and Loyola Memorial Park in Marikina City. The agency will also deploy medical response teams at various bus terminals that will provide aid to passengers in need of immediate medical attention. Uh, magtatayo tayo ng medical assistance uh, center doon uh, ng road emergency. Uh, aside from that, uh, magkakaroon kami ng cleanup. Hindi po ito loob ng sementeryo pero yung mga daan papuntang sementeryo at magtatalaga po kami ng mga enforcers para tumulong sa mga rerouting na gagawin sa mga syudad. The MMDA will also conduct cleaning of trashes and removal of traffic obstructions. Its personnel will also assist passengers carrying heavy baggages, persons with disabilities, and senior citizens at bus terminals. Earlier today, the MMDA held a meeting with several village officials and representatives of bus terminals along Cubao in Quezon City. In the meeting, they discussed the clearing of some roads in several villages in Metro Manila. MMDA explains the clearing aims to provide provincial buses alternative routes so they will no longer contribute to already heavy traffic in EDSA. Uh, I've been conducting operations ng uh, road clearing with the MMDA and DPOS. Uh, very ano yan, frequent yan kasi marami talagang mga matitigas ang ulo. I have uh, 21 men. No? to compose the traffic and orders ng barangay, i-deploy natin sila 24-7 ditong time ng undas na ito. Meanwhile, Philippine National Police or PNP Station 7 will deploy more than 100 cops around bus terminals in Cubao. They will provide security to the passengers and prevent thieves from taking advantage of the influx of people. The PNP also orders bus terminals to conduct strict inspection of baggages to ensure that no prohibited objects could get through, which might cause accidents. Hindi yung basta-basta ano lang, na chinecheck lang. Kung baga talaga to na check yung gagawin to, iniwasan natin yun. Know, may mag-asik ng lagim dito. Kung baga may bomba, dadalhin sa sasakyan. Uh, yung bagahin na ano, pinadala lang, hindi nila basta-basta tatanggapin yun. Unless otherwise, kung talagang may identity naman yun ang padala, ibubuksan nila muna. The PNP reminds passengers to refrain from wearing jewelries and displaying their mobile phones and money to avoid victimized by thieves and robbers. Abby Santa Inez, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The National Capital Region Police Office begins conducting inspections at bus and train stations as well as in Manila North Cemetery as preparation for next week's influx of passengers. 
Grace Cassin tells us why. The National Capital Region Police Office or NCRPO made rounds in the Araneta Bus Terminal and LRT Station earlier as part of the security measures during the upcoming observance of UNDAS. According to NCRPO Chief Police Director Oscar Albayalde, they want to ensure the passengers will be safe while traveling to their home provinces. Unang-una yung uh, security detail natin, uh, we want to ensure na nandito yung mga ating mga kapulisan, yung ating uh, tutulong just in case na merong mga magiging uh, concern yung ating mga kababayan na sumasakay at umuwi sa kanila mga probinsya. NCRPO has also set up tarpaulins containing the prohibited items or activities at all terminals. These tarpaulins serves as reminders to the passengers. Sa entrance pa lang, nandun na yung mga pinagbabawal, lalong-lalo na yung mga dapat uh, na hindi dapat dadalin ng ating mga kababayan na sumasakay. Plus, of course, yung kung ano yung pinagbabawal sa cementerio, linagay na rin natin all in one. Aside from terminals, the NCRPO also conducted an inspection in the Manila North Cemetery. Authorities expected that on November 1, about 2 million people will visit the biggest cemetery in the country. Effective tomorrow, Saturday, October 28, magde-deploy na tayo ng 730 policemen. Then on October 30, we will double the number of our deployment. Al Bayalde says that their inspections of bus terminals will be until November 2, as the number of those going home from provinces is expected to surge. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Travelers have started to flock to the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3. Joa Nano will tell us why. Although Monday, October 30 is not declared a holiday, some travelers opted to fly today and avoid the bulk of passengers that will flock the Nino Aquino International Airport in the coming week. So far, the queue of passengers at the Naia entrance is that long yet. Naia personnel nevertheless implement strict security measures inside and around the airport and are meticulously inspection every passenger luggage. Despite the strict security, queues at the check-in counter are still manageable. With some going abroad, majority of passengers are province-bound. Some passengers say they do not have any issue against the system that the airport authorities are implementing. But even with a smooth process of passengers at the Naia, some travelers opted to come ahead of time to make sure that they are not caught in the heavy Manila traffic and make it to their flight. Traffic, sobra. Hanggang ngayon may natin kaming tao, traffic, hanggang ngayon naipit sa traffic ngayon. Sobrang traffic kanina para umalis sa 1 o'clock hanggang wala pa rito. Boarding time ko is 4.30 tapos ang flight ko is 6.30. Anong oras po kayo pumunta dito? Uh, umalis po kami from Valenzuela at 11 o'clock. Medyo traffic po talaga. Uh, bakit po inagahan natin ang punta? Uh, Makarelax, relax lang. Makarelax, relax. <laughs> Dili matrapit. Uh -huh. So far, the airport authorities are still lenient in observing the two-minute waiting time for vehicles that are transporting passengers. Meanwhile, the Department of Transportation will place all public utility vehicle terminals, airports and seaports under heightened alert from October 30 to November 6. Transportation personnel will be on duty 24-7 and will be on alert to give assistance and service to passengers this long holiday, especially on November 1. The Manila International Airport Authority's officials will conduct strict inspection at the four terminals of the NIA on Monday to check on the preparedness of airport personnel as big bulk of passengers arrive. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The North Luzon Expressway Management assures the readiness of their personnel in welcoming motorists this long holiday. The NLEX management is particularly monitoring all of its toll plazas in this time of the year. Leslie Longboan tells us why. The North Luzon Expressway Management expects around 200,000 northbound motorists that will use the expressway. NLEX manager Robin Ignacio says they are deploying more than 200 personnel in the toll plazas. Close monitoring will be implemented in Balintawak northbound and Tarlac toll plazas. The NLEX authorities have also formally implemented the RFID or the radio frequency identification to ensure smooth flow of traffic in each toll gate. Around 3 minutes, uh, 3 seconds lang compared to yung sa manual toll collection that will take about uh, 10 seconds. No? So malaki ni bilis yung, yung transaction. So hopefully maraming mag-avail sa ating mga kababayan lalo na yung babiyahe ngayong uh, undas. Class 1 to Class 3 vehicle owners can take hold of the RFIDs for 500 pesos. The RFIDs come with sensor stickers worth 200 pesos for free. Ito sir yung pinaka sticker tag. 
yung pinaka-cheap po yung nababasa sa lane. Nakita ko to sa coastal. Parang ang bilis lang niya ganun. So gusto ko din itry. Meanwhile, the NLEX authorities will implement the free towing for motorists with Class 1 vehicles from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening. Gasoline stations along the NLEX will also provide free Wi-Fi and medical assistance for travelers. Leslie Lombowen, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Next on Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte appoints retired General Eduardo Año as Undersecretary of the Department of Interior and Local Government. Police Superintendent Hansel Marantan, one of the accused in the Atimonan massacre case, is now reinstated to active duty. White News will be right back. Malacanang reiterates that under Secretary Ernesto Abella remains to be the presidential spokesperson. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Reports are circulating that under Secretary Ernesto Abella will be replaced by Cabayan Party List Representative Jare Roque as the presidential spokesperson. Abella was also not present in today's regular Mindanao Hour briefing in Malacanang. His assistant, China Hoxon, however, maintains that Undersecretary Abelia is still the official spokesperson of President Rodrigo Duterte. He is still the presidential spokesperson. He is carrying out his mandate. He is not here right now and it is not unusual. I have done several briefings on his behalf. This evening, President Duterte will be attending the birthday dinner of Congressman Roque in Davao City. President Duterte has earlier endorsed Roque as a candidate for the 2019 senatorial elections. Meanwhile, the terms Mindanao Hour and Abelia trended on social media because a comment made by the official Facebook page of the Office of the Presidential Spokesperson in the comment section of the Facebook live broadcast of Mindanao Hour briefing was captured through a screenshot by netizens. The comment was criticizing two media personalities. But Malacanang says the comment was made by a former administrator of the page who is no longer connected with the office. The palace also stresses that the comment does not reflect the office of the presidential spokesperson and that the access of the person responsible to the comment has been removed. OPS, however, did not name the said former page administrator. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. President Rodrigo Duterte has formally appointed newly retired General Eduardo Año as Undersecretary of the Department of the Interior and Local Government. This after the Chief Executive mentioned his intention to designate Año as DILG Secretary, although the ban for any former Chief of Staff to be assigned as head of any agency within one year of his re retirement barred the President from doing so. Anyo formally retired and turned over the leadership of the AFP to Lieutenant General Ray Leonardo Guerrero yesterday. Malacanang criticizes the Liberal Party for stating that the Duterte administration is all out in demonizing Senator Franklin Drillon and former DILD Secretary Mar Rojas. Malacanang says they have no connection with the top drug suspect in Iloilo, Ricky Sereno. The palace stresses that Sereno was the one who implicated Drilon and Rojas in the operation of illegal drugs in Visayas as drug protectors. The administration has nothing to do with the testimony of a drug cartel bagman, Mr. Ricky Sereno, implicating Senator Franklin Drilon and former Secretary Mar Rojas to the illegal drug trade in the Visayas. The Liberal Party is afraid of its own ghost after conducting several witch hunt investigations against their perceived political enemies when they were in power. 
The Philippine National Police confirms that Police Superintendent Hansel Marantan is now back in police service, signifying that the operation in connection with the Atimonan rub-out incident in 2013 was legitimate. Monokson will tell us why. Police Superintendent Hansel Marantan is now back in the police force. Marantan was the official leader in the alleged rub-out in Atimonan, Quezon in 2013, which resulted in the death of 13 individuals. The National Police Commission Appellate Board approved Marantan's appeal and the PNP cannot do otherwise but reinstate him. This appeal was granted, so we cannot uh, do otherwise when they mag-issue ng order for his reinstatement. Kasi nag-appeal ba siya, then granted yung appeal niya. PNP Directorate for Personal Records and Management or DPRM says Marantan will be assigned to the PNP Highway Patrol Group under the office of the director. Meanwhile, in a text message sent by Marantan, he accused Senator Laila Dilima and some state prosecutors as liars as the appellate board's decision proved that they are not guilty of the accusation thrown at them. And with his reinstatement in the police force, Marantan's counsel, Attorney Ferdinand Benitez, says the laws guaranteeing fairness and protection for all do prevail. His reinstatement confirms that the evidence of guilt against him was not strong. That, that, was, that is a ground for the grant of his bail in the main case. So I, I think it just reinforced that fact that the evidence of guilt against Colonel Marantan is not strong. Marantan's camp believes that Senator De Lima failed to perform her duties as the then Secretary of the Department of Justice. She merely investigated yung, yung case as DOJ Secretary. Kaya lang ang masasabi ko dyan, she had a hand dun sa pag-iimbestiga ng kaso. Nararamdaman namin yung influence niya doon sa kaso. Marantan was first dismissed in 2014 by then PNP Chief Alan Purisima due to the said rub out in Atimonan, Quezon. In March 2017, the Manila Regional Trial Court Branch 34 allowed Marantan and other accused in the Atimonan rub out incident to post bail. To date, even with Napolcom absolving Marantan, the case against him is still being heard in court. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Justice has finished the preliminary investigation on the killing of Kian de los Santos. Meanwhile, 12 Caloocan policemen insisted they should not be charged for the teenager's death. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. It was the last DOJ hearing on the death of Kian de los Santos as the DOJ panel submitted the case for resolution which will determine whether or not the policemen being implicated in the killing should be indicted. 16 Caloacan cops are facing charges for murder, torture and planting of evidence including PCP-7 Commander Chief Inspector Amor Cerillo. 12 of the policemen insisted they should not be charged since only three were present in the crime scene, namely PO3 Arnold Juarez, PO1 Jeremias Pereda, and PO1 Jerwin Cruz. Eight of them did not participate in the operation at all. So, kung isasama mo just because members sila nung team ng PCP7 ng Kaloocan, eh, anong klaseng batas meron tayo pag ganun? Humihingi ng katarungan ang magulang ni Kian, sinasabi nila inosente yung bata. Paano naman yung mga inosenteng polis? The lawyer says the public authorities' office should not rely on the findings of the PNP Internal Affairs Service or EAS since it is only for administrative proceedings. They allege in their joint reply that there was already a finding of the EAS that, that all of the respondents are liable. But in truth, there is no decision yet from the EAS. But according to Pau, this is mere alibi on the part of the policemen. Self-serving allegations yan, better trace out yan sa trial. Kasi alibi, especially alibi weakest defense yan. The policemen maintained Kian was killed after he engaged them in a shootout during a legitimate anti-drugs operation. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila.
Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales has ordered the filing of a plunder complaint against former Immigration Deputy Commissioners Al Argosino and Michael Robles and retired police officer Wally Sombero. This is in connection with a 50 million peso bribery scandal involving the said officials in exchange of the release of the more than 1,000 Chinese workers at the leisure parks and casino in Clark, Pampanga that was closed down by authorities. The three also face charges such as bribery, violation of the anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act, and the violation of the Presidential Decree No. 46 that penalizes public officials for accepting gift, gifts from private individuals. The Ombudsman says that based on investigation, Argosino and Robles received 50 million pesos from Chinese casino mogul Jack Lau. Meanwhile, former Bureau of Immigration Intelligence Chief Charles Kalima Jr. is also facing direct bribery and graft charges. Lam will also be charged with violation of PD-46 for his attempt to bribe the former immigration officials. Meanwhile, the Office of the Ombudsman confirms the issuance of a dismissal order against Iloilo City Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilo. Rajal Adora will tell us why. Guilty of serious dishonesty relative to his unlawful acquisition of wealth. This has been the decision of the Office of the Ombudsman on the dishonesty and grave misconduct complaint filed by former Iloilo Provincial Administrator Manuel Mejorada against Iloilo City Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog in 2015. According to the Ombudsman, Mayor Mabilog failed to explain how his wealth ballooned, particularly the 8.9 million pesos worth of the additional amount he amassed in just a period of one year from 2012 to 2013. Aside from this middle from service order, the Ombudsman also imposed cancellation of civil service eligibility on Mabilog, forfeiture of retirement benefits, perpetual disqualification from holding public office and prohibition from taking civil service examinations. Meanwhile, the camp of Mabilog is hoping for the reversal of the dismissal order of Office of the Ombudsman. According to his lawyer, attorney Mark Piad, Mabilog plans to appeal the said decision. We will just uh, explore or avail whatever legal remedies that we have. Uh, we might probably ask for a PRO from the Court of Appeals or we might uh, uh, appeal the decision of the, uh, what you call that, the Ombudsman or, or, or we might file a petition for review before the, Supreme, uh, before the Court of Appeals. Meanwhile, when asked about the threats of President Rodrigo Duterte to make Mabilog his next target, the lawyer refused comment. We don't know what the president uh, meant, no? so uh, we really cannot comment uh, any further on that. No? But whatever will happen, we just uh, laid down to that divine intervention. No? So that's basically what was, uh, the mayor was saying last time. Roger Ladora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Some non-governmental organizations have temporarily suspended their operations that aim to help evacuees in Marawi City and in Sag Sagira Sagi Sagiran, Lanao del Sur. Monokson will tell us why. October 25, at past 1 in the afternoon, the tricycle that carried Lumbayanage Barangay Captain Rowaida Alawi was waylaid by a Red Tamarau FX. The report received by the Sagyaran Municipal Police Station says Alawi, along with some of his relatives who were also on board the tricycle, was held at gunpoint by the suspects. Police authorities, however, still could not consider the incident as kidnapping. Hindi pa rin natin matawag na kidnapping sir kasi wala pa kasing demand. So simula na nangyari sir hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nagkontakt ng mga abductors. The police also admits that they are still blank as to the identities of the abductors or what group they belong to. So far, the only information the Sagyaran police has was a text message that Alawi received in January, demanding that he give them 400,000 pesos, otherwise they will abduct him. Hanggang ngayon, clueless pa rin po kami. Wala kaming, wala kaming alam, wala kaming idea. Kasi hanggang ngayon, wala kaming, walang nakipag-communicate sa amin na anumang grupo sila. 
The incident, which presented a security concern, prompted some non-governmental organizations to temporarily suspend their operation in Sagyaran that helped evacuees from Marawi City. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A group of migratory animal advocates toured Las Piñas Wetland Park today. Rajel Adora will tell us why. The delegates of the Conference of Parties of the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals or CMS COP12 visited a wetland park in Las Piñas City today. Senator Cynthia Villar, the chair of the Senate Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, accompanied the delegates to present to them the conservation efforts the government does for the wetland park. Villar notes the public can visit the said park. They can go bird watching but not picnic because they will leave their garbage. <laughs> we, we don't have enough people to clean. The Las Piñas Paranaque Critical Habitat and Ecotourism Area is an urban wetland where migratory species like birds temporarily take shelter. So when it's snowing by this time, they have to go to a country that is not snowing or else they won't survive. The delegates were glad to witness the view at the wetland park. It's uh, a great uh, opportunity to see some of your wildlife and, and uh, yes, it's very enjoyable. So for us, it's about the birds, really. With the help of the Department of Tourism, Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority and Department of Natural Resources, the lady senator says the government will soon build a museum, training center, restaurant, boardwalk and bird hides at the wetland park. Rajal Adora. UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Coming up on Y News. Aid agencies call for help as migrants and refugees in Greece are now facing a mental health emergency. And Changi's Airport's most innovative terminal for to start boarding passengers in October 31. More from Y News after this break. San Pedro Laguna's bet is on top of Wish Covery's third batch of wishfuls in terms of YouTube views. Leslie Ong Bowen will tell us why. At 12 noon today, the power viewing of the performances of the third batch of wishfuls for Wish Covery's second round already closed. Daniel Joshua Supnet of San Pedro Laguna takes the lead with almost 60,000 views. I'll never The rising diva of Makati City, Princess Sevillana, comes next with 25,224 views. Camarines Norte's Kimberly Baluzo follows with 19,396 views. On the other hand, another wishful from Laguna, Jenny Mae Mabini of Calamba, earned 11,370 views. Meanwhile, tomorrow the wishers will find out what the Wishcovery reactors have to say with the wishful's performances. The Wishcovery episode will be uploaded on Wish 1075's first YouTube channel tomorrow at 9 in the evening. Leslie Lombowen, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. UNTV News team in Singapore was among the first to experience a boutique feel inside the Chang'e Airport's newest terminal, the most innovative Terminal 4. Here's why from Myla Guevara. After its completion in December 2016, Singapore Changi Airport's Terminal 4 is now ready to serve its passengers beginning on Tuesday, October 31st. It is a flagship terminal for innovation, new technology, and new operations concepts. Uh, we wanted the terminal to have a very distinctive character, so we wanted to also uh, 
push the boundaries using new innovative concepts and also new technology in the terminal uh, to deliver a much better passenger experience and also efficiency. There are many new areas uh, that we have done quite differently in Terminal 4, such as uh, we have FAST, which is the self-check-in process, backdrop, and all the way to immigration clearance and boarding that is fully automated end-to-end. Uh, we also have a very impressive range of uh, commercial offerings. Terminal 4 offers a fully automated departure process integrating facial recognition technology with end-to-end self-service options. It also allows passengers to have a visually immersive and theatrical experience with its Peranakan facade where a six-minute cultural mini-theater show of Singapore's Peranakan love story is played. The artworks located at various locations inside the terminal are also not to be missed. The centerpiece, the Petal Clouds, is a grand-scale kinetic sculpture considered as the largest kinetic sculpture in the world. T4 is designed to serve 16 million passengers a year. On its opening on Tuesday, six airlines are set to move over to Terminal 4, which altogether will take up 50% of the handling capacity of Terminal. We look forward to welcoming all our passengers coming to use Terminal 4, and we wish you a very pleasant and very uh, positively surprising journey over here in Terminal 4. Meanwhile, Ms. Po said they are currently designing Changi's fifth terminal, which will become the largest terminal in Singapore. For the fifth consecutive year, Singapore's Changi Airport maintains its number one spot in the prestigious Skytrax World Airport Awards. No doubt, the facilities here are top-notch, especially with the opening of its most innovative terminal, Terminal 4. Myla Guevara, UNTV News and Rescue, Singapore. Yeah, and of course, before we sign off, happy weekend to everyone. Yes, happy weekend, Jago, and to our viewers. And stay safe in traffic. Yes. Those are the reasons behind the news, October 27, 2017. Among Angelo Castro III. Reasons we delivered to you as they unfold. I'm Darlene Basingat. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why News. news.